And so they thought, oh, that'd be fine. You can just do it right from the from the uh, uh, from the choir lot. And so and put this mic in front of me, and uh, I'm in, I'm impressed by this. I don't know whether you realize it, but when you sit here, can you imagine how much music the four walls of this church have heard over all of these years? Not only have they heard the anthems on Sundays, but they've heard the Easter celebrations, the Christmas Eve celebrations. They've heard all those weddings and some funerals. This place must echo with the sound of music. Uh, we are so blessed by having wonderful people who direct our music. First of all, Mary Kay, who is the director of music. and she makes us do things we never thought we would be able to do. Jessica, who is our choir director. <laughs> Curtis Olschlager, who does the uh, bell choir. <laughs> and then we have the praise band. <laughs> if you cannot find a slot to help us, and that lineup, then you can come and sort out the music if you like. Uh, uh, one of the things, this is for stewardship, of course, and one of the best ways there is for you to help bring your time and talent to the church, this is, as the kids say, this is the most funnest one of all, is to be in the music program. This is kind of a good group. We laugh, and we have fun, and oftentimes at practice time, there's laughter coming in. Now, not laughing at what we are singing or how awful it sounds, <laughs> but just the joy of being together. So if you have any, any inclination of all that you would like to, um, enjoy this. On your, on your stewardship, blank, you know, and I don't know why they do this, but right down the very end, the very last thing, there's a place where you can mark that you will help with the music. Don't ignore that. Don't skip it over. And do. Come and join us. Because we're fun, and we have a good time, and we try very hard to make beautiful music. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
something to do and you forget to put your glasses on so you can read it. Please join me in the prayer of illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your words proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you have to say to us today. Amen. The scripture reading is from Romans chapter 3, verses 21 through 26, on page 916 in your pew Bible. But now, apart from law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by His blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, because in the divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It is to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous, and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Sunday. 
Since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are justified by his grace. In the most general sense, religion means getting close to God. We approach God by coming to temples, mosques, and churches. We approach God through prayer and songs of praise. We are particularly aware today that we approach God through music. And our faith tells us that as we seek to come closer to God, God also desires to draw closer to us. Draw nigh to God, and God will draw nigh to you. Our faith further tells us that we were created by God to have relationship with God, and when that relationship was interrupted, God even made another effort. God loved the world so much, he sent his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but rather that the world should believe in Him. Our relationship with God is a gift from God. Now, Paul was very concerned that we dare not think that we deserve God's love. Heaven forbid. Paul really wanted to emphasize that God's love for us comes to us as a free gift, comes as grace. God's love for us is unmerited. It is free. Well, I think I'm less concerned about reminding everyone that they are really miserable sinners, totally undeserving of God's grace. That was Paul. I'm just glad that God loves us. The most basic message comes early on in our church experience, and Chad and I did not consult about this beforehand, but that message, I think, is Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. You know, almost everything that is really deeply important to me in my life has come to me as a gift, as a matter of good fortune, as a matter of providence. My birth family, the nation in which I was born, the privileged circumstances I enjoy in our society, all free gifts, all dumb luck that I have nothing to do with. Being fairly bright, having family support that made it possible for me to stay in school, meeting a wonderful neighbor, having fine daughters, having good friends, generally good health, having meaningful work, ending up here at the Church of Peace. Do you realize how unlikely it is that a Methodist from California would end up as a pastor of a United Church of Christ in Rock Island, Illinois, for 17 years already? Very low odds, all important gifts. So since we have all been gifted, because my guess is that a lot of the real gifts in your life are just gifts too. And the most of the stuff in our life is a matter of unmerited favor. What does God want us to do with our gifts? Our stewardship theme from 1 Peter gives us a plan in this regard. It says, as each has received a gift, employ it for one another as good stewards of God's very grace. Having received gifts of various sorts, we are asked to use these gifts we have for the benefit of the whole community. Like a steward at a banquet who has a bottle of wine in hand, we are to share out among those at the table the gift of the host to pour it out as it's needed. We see many examples of those who have used their gifts on behalf of the whole community. Mary Kay has
for about 40 years so far. I think, I think 40 years that she counted time in children's choir. Uh, you know, she's pretty good at organizing and calling out the gifts from others to contribute to the music and praise. That's another gift. You've got to be pretty wily to keep away from Mary Kay. She can get your gift out of you. And she is talented on the keys of the organ and the piano. And she writes and arranges music for the various instrumental and choral groups here at the church. She encourages children in their music and creates a safe environment in which they can share their music to the glory of God. And that's just what she does here at the church. And we're not talking about her community efforts in music or her work uh, in the schools for many years. You know, in just a few moments, we'll say a prayer of dedication for the echo organ. This part of the church organ has been in need of rebuilding for a good long time now. And we have a very generous church member who has both the resources and the love to underwrite this good-sized project with a money gift. And we are deeply grateful both for the gift of the organ